and not part of a problem anywhere you go. Okay? Mm -hmm. I hope my English is clear. You understand me? Yes. yes. Thank you. It makes now my life easier here. So my name is Catherine Omanyo, and when I was your age, I had a very, very sick father. So every evening, I would walk home from school to a dying father. And because I loved my dad so dearly, I personally was so traumatized for almost six years, walking home to a dying father was not easy. And I started praying for him and just wishing that one day when I go back, I find him okay. But unfortunately, he lost the fight. He gave up and passed on. So it was so, so painful to me. And back there in that little village where even Google Maps have not yet discovered us, in that little village, there are so many traditions that happen, so many practices and customs that happen, especially to women, okay? Mm -hmm. So as a young girl, I witnessed one of the traditions being done in the name of cleansing the widow to do those rituals. I did not like anything. So this is what supposed, was supposed to be happen, uh, to, to be done when my father was buried. After the burial, they brought some men, among them my uncle, one of them to take over my mother and our properties. But my mother said no. And because she is a woman, I'm putting quotes, I will describe what I mean there. A woman in that village is not supposed to be heard. She is only supposed to be seen. So they discuss and decide for her. But this time she said no. My mom said no. I do not want to be inherited. What happened when she said no? She received a beating and she was thrown out. Thrown out of her house and all her matrimonial properties taken away. It was very painful. I will ask questions later, okay? I've seen so many hands rise. Thank you so much. And when we were thrown out of our own home, and she was carrying a little baby. Imagine if somebody beats your mother and she's carrying a little baby and she has other little children. So we were thrown out and when we were thrown out of our house, a few friends took us in, a few relatives took us in, but it was a burden to them because where I come from, people are severely poor. Even knowing where their next meal will come from, is very hard. So we ran out of options and we ended up homeless. So my mother looked for a very funny house. It was shanty, it was, didn't have electricity. There were rats in that house, cockroaches, dirt floor. It was just a small round thing where we used to hide and sleep. But whenever it could rain, the roof was leaking, so we are forced to wake up and cling on each other on one side of the house and wait for the rains to subside. It was very, very difficult for us. And we got, as days went on, we looked dirty, we looked like mad people, and we started smelling. So you can't really have friends when you smell. And I had jiggers in my feet, Just some jiggers. little insects was staying in my feet and eating on my flesh. Because when you're dirty, you attract parasites, okay? So it used to be so painful. But I used to sneak in school because I knew in school I would eat, okay? I used to sneak in school and sit behind and also try to have lessons just like any other.
child. But unfortunately, in Kenya, you have to pay school fees to be in school. But my mom's situation, she could not afford even one dollar or half a dollar a day. So every time I was chased out of school, and many times I was even beaten and thrown out of class because I could not afford school fees. But I looked at my life and I looked at my mother's life and my brothers and sisters' lives and I believed that staying in school will help me a lot. One, if you love to read, you become very intelligent, you have a lot of knowledge, and when you have a lot of knowledge, you choose to do right. You choose the right friends. And you start following your path without distractions. At least even if you do not know what you want to be when you grow up, if you still do not know your vision, with reading very, very extensively, you will know what you are not supposed to be doing. So that helps you a lot. That is why I kept on sneaking in school. I wanted to help my mother, so desperately. So the few days I could sneak in school, I used to read and borrow notes from my friends and read. And whenever they gave us tests or exams, guess how I used to perform? Very nicely. I could just talk the class. Here, I am always absent, but when exams come, I am number one. I get 80s and 90s, and other children who come every day in school, they get 20 and 30. So one of the teachers was very concerned and wanted to know all about me. But unfortunately, the time she came to look for me, I was absent because I had been beaten that day, and it was very hurting to me because I had gone almost two days without eating. And my uniform was in tatters. I didn't have clothes. I didn't have shoes. I was always like cold because my health was too poor at the same time. So when they beat me, I went home. I was crying. I did not even get my mother. I did not get my brothers. People were just scattering and disappearing because when you are homeless, you do what the environment dictates you sometimes. Okay. So I went back and I was afraid to come back to school because I didn't want to be beaten. If you go to school and the teacher beats you up, do you come back? No, no. You fear. So I started fearing coming back. But after staying for long, you know our house was, had nothing. No food, no television, no radio, no electricity. So by six in the evening, it's very dark. There was nothing to remain home for. So again, after getting so bored for long, long, many days, I came back again and I sneaked in school. I was such behind. I couldn't we were many. We were about 87 in class, so it was easy for me to hide. But when I came back, everybody was like, oh, there you are. The teacher was looking for you. So I was shaking again. I was thinking maybe it's another thing. I really wanted to sneak out and run, and they've never seen me again. But just before I ran out, the teacher appeared, and she was like, follow me to the staff. So I went with her, and I learned something in life. Many times we are afraid to share what is pressing us, what is challenging us in life. But if somebody cares, it can be your aunt, it can be your mom, it can be your friend, it can be a teacher. If somebody cares, tell them your challenges. So I talked to this teacher and I remember I was hysterical. I cried really heavy that day. And she gave me the time. I wiped my tears and I told her, do not chase me. I want to be in school. I really want to learn. I don't know what to do without being here because it's only here that I read, I pass time reading, and then I can eat as well, and I feel safe. So when she learned that I was really needy, she started looking on ways of supporting. So as young people, anytime you see maybe a friend is struggling, look on how to be part of a solution in their lives. And if you can't help, don't harm them, okay? Talk about
about it to somebody mature, somebody older, somebody who can also suggest ways of helping them. So this teacher really was my breakfast. She knocked every door. She went wild looking for help because I would have just disappeared. So she finally got somebody who paid my school fees. I was very happy. I came to school every day. By six, I would be there. Most children would come by eight. I would be there by six at the crack of dawn every day. Saturday, Sunday, I was in school because I was trying to catch up with the time I lost when I was always thrown out of school. So between the time they got somebody to pay my fees and the time for national exam, it was six months for me. And our Kenyan exam is set for as long as you are in school. So you just don't know where the examiner will be focusing. So I was reading like six years back and forth. Somewhere in the middle of six years and forth. So it was so, so intensive. But the first exam we sat used to be called mock. I was not ready, but I just sat for it. Out of 13 subjects, I did like five subjects and didn't do other other subjects. And they did a uh, main grade of that. And I got a terrible grade, a D plus. I wasn't happy, but I still worked hard waiting for the national exam. By the end of the time the national exams were brought, I had improved and I got an A minus. I was very happy. A minus is like getting 88%. I missed just 12 months to get 100. So I was now invited, admitted to go to the University of Nairobi. I'd never been in town myself. I'd never even worn shoes. And yet Nairobi is a big city, just like here, Brooklyn. And people dress smart. People don't smell. So I went to Nairobi and I looked like a scarecrow. My grandmother gave me her sweater. My aunt gave me her shoes. I was that time, I think size seven, but she gave me a size nine. So I couldn't even walk properly. I was looking funny. And some children were laughing at me. It did not bother me so much. What bothered me is one of them scolding, shouting at me and telling me I was smelly and I was embarrassing girls and the boys were complaining. So I listened to her carefully and I got a positive message from the scolding. Many times you will meet a challenge, but do not be scared at the challenge. Face it. So what I did, because I had learned in school how to make clothes, I started going to the tailors and borrowing them rags. Instead of them burning the rags, I told them to give me the rags. They did not know what I was going to do with the rags. So I started patching those rags, making clothes for myself. And after a few days of me putting on those patched clothes, Many, many students at the university started wanting to dress like me. And they came to me and started ordering those clothes. Everybody wanted to dress in the patched clothes. And I started supplying clothes, just like that. So I started my designing shop, just like that. So many times there can be an ugly thing, an ugly scene, or something really terrible happening to me. But in the ugly scene, there's a beautiful thing that can come out. So as young people, you might not get it now, but be ready to fight on in future as you keep growing and always look at the positive side of it. So when I started having money, I remembered my mother's situation. I remembered my situation. And I promised myself to be part of a solution to make our situation better. So I started sending my mother some money and sending anybody who's like struggling in our home some money to help them as I continued with my studies. So while in the university, I decided to get out of the home that I used to work as a nanny to go and rent my own house. 
but I chose to go to the ghetto, in the slum, so that I don't waste money going to rent a very expensive house and continue being broke. So I went to the slums and I realized that there were so many young people like you and other older youths idle. I started befriending them and asking them why they were not in school. And they told me they didn't have school fees. They had been thrown out. That was me. So I gathered them and I started offering free tuition. Free tuition. Every evening and weekends, free tuition. I started with five, but before I knew it, I had over 50. So I rented a room like this and partitioned it and started now separating these children to have like proper learning. A few months passed by and some officers from the city council came with the police. They wanted to arrest me and throw me in jail. The reason being I was running an institution according to them which was not licensed. So I asked how do I go about it because I didn't know. They gave me two weeks to register the institution or else they come and arrest me. So I rushed again and asked, to, went to offices, filled forms, and I started my school. I have a school called Impreza Academy. It has been growing. Today I have over 321 children majority are orphans. Where I live, that place, unfortunately, there is a terrible disease called HIV and AIDS. Because many people did not go to school, they think it is witchcraft, but it has killed so many others. People of my age are very rare. We are very few. And we only have younger people. So most of the homes that I target are homes where children have lost daddy and mommy, grandmother and grandfather. So I bring them in my school and I have three dormitories, two for girls and one for boys. And most children there have come from very disturbing environments. A situation like mine used to be. So I focus to also just put a smile on somebody in any place in this world. So I'm so excited that I've come to talk to you about that. What I want you to know as young people, anything can happen. But your situation is better than any child in Kenya. It's like somebody has already run for you 3,000 miles and given you a battle. Do not choose wrong friends or do bad things or waste your time and start rolling backwards to zero mark and yet somebody has already run for you 3,000 miles. Because if you do or choose wrong things and go back to zero, and you become poor, and then you are part of a problem in this nation, you have nobody to, 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 to blame. You blame yourself. Because me, I was on negative 3,000. And life dictated me to run and come and meet somebody who has already started running at plus 3,000 yeah. miles. And unfortunately, we have to finish our races. So run your race. I have run mine. I'm still running. What race are you running? Are you running, making sure that if mommy sees you, she smiles. If daddy sees you, she smiles. Your uncles, your neighbors are happy. Or you are running a mile that when people see you, they do not want to see you with their children. Are you part of a problem or you are part of a solution? Thank you so much.